It was 22 below here last night. Let me tell you something. It was cold. Cold. Uh, border, you got to reduce it. Uh, you got to zero the border out. Or uh, I'm going to show you how to do. I'll show you how to do that in this training, Deb. I'll show you. Uh, you got to go into uh, content, and where it says border, either make the border the same color as your background, and or just uh zero it out you probably got it looks like there's probably about a, a seven or seven on that something like that if you would just uh, zero that out that would take care of that okay we're going to get started here looks like everybody's checking in getting in on a tuesday night we're going to rock and roll but if you'll go to content deb you'll see where i'm talking about it says border and just put uh take that all the way down to zero I want to welcome everybody. We are about to wrap up next week. Matter of fact, will probably be our last night, last Tuesday night of uh, uh, digital discard. And, and mostly, what we'll do is we'll do we'll answer some questions next week, uh, do some things, and just make sure everybody understands the business card. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about hiring a sales force. How many of you would love to hire a sales force? How many of you would like to go out tomorrow and find you a bunch of people and put them on the streets and and get all excited and, and, and hire a bunch of people so you don't have to do nothing and and man you can get them out there you can get them working and uh, everything's kicking the money's coming in so fast you don't even know how to spend it I mean things are just absolutely exciting and and, and man. It's it's just like wow! I'm gonna got I'm got me a sales force rocking and rolling and and uh, uh, it's gonna be awesome. So we're gonna talk about that tonight, and I'm probably gonna surprise you with what I got to say. Uh, I'm gonna probably shock you with what I got to say tonight. And uh, <laughs> I was I was working on my slides and and. Uh, I highly recommend you build a sales force. But I think everybody's grandiose brainstorm of going out, man, I want if I could hire, you know, you sit down with a pencil and a piece of paper. Ask Kenny Dutton. He and I do it a million times a week. You sit down with a pencil and a piece of paper and you say, you know what, man? <laughs> Will says I never shock him. Oh shoot. I've got to change my ways. But uh, you know you can sit down and you say, boy, if this, if if the average is 1.5 per salesperson and and uh, I could hire me 10 salespeople, I could bring in $300,000 a year and and all this stuff. And uh, you know what? It it is it's awesome, and you can't do that. I will tell you right now, you can do that. Uh, and and uh, but. What I'm going to warn you before I get started is this simple word, two simple words. Be prepared. Be prepared. Uh, you know, it's uh, um, the hardest lessons I've learned, not just with this at App Wizard, but in my entire life. I've, I've had the opportunity all my life to manage people. Uh, when I was working in my father's restaurant and he started leaving me there to run the place, I was responsible. Uh, he Everything was on my shoulders and I was 14 years old. And I'll never forget firing my first two people that I had to fire. And stood me and realized that when I fired them, there was nobody else to take their place that night. And I was the only one in the store. And uh, the only thing my dad said is, uh, <laughs> he said, you know what? 
He said, I guess you learned your lesson to that, didn't you? He said, you don't fire them when they're in the middle of the work day. He said, you wait until the night's over. But uh, so I've been learning by the hard knocks lessons of salespeople just about my entire life. Uh, I, I've watched people not show up for work. I've watched people not do their job. Uh, pretty much uh, what I've learned about the human race is they're stinking lazy. Uh, we live in the laziest world I've ever seen in my life. We live in a, a time when people want it given to them instead of people earning it. That's why you're such a unique breed on here right now. You're in here to learn tonight that, uh, that you uh, uh, are, are a very unique individual in the fact that you own your own business. Not only do you own your own business, you work your own business, and you bust your butt every day. And I'm going to tell you right now, people don't. We, we live in a socialist society where everybody wants it given to them. They will lie to you, and we're going to talk about all of that in a minute. They will tell you stuff that's not true. They're going to tell you got stuff working that's not true. Uh, they're going to tell you they're out selling. It's not true. Uh, there's all kind of things that they will do that makes you think that you're going to make uh, $10,000 this week, and guess what? At the end of the week, it's nothing but a pain in the butt. You've got a headache. You're screaming at each other. You're mad, and uh, it, it, it's hard work. So we're going to get started now that you've heard my monologue <laughs> about salespeople. And I do have sales reps, okay? But uh, they've been with me a long time, and, and it, it, it wasn't easy getting them. And so uh, but we're going to rock and roll here. Uh, everybody, thank goodness the recording started tonight, and uh, everything's working well. I want to welcome everybody to our six weeks of live training to help you launch your business with a digital business card or mobile business card. And yes, I still have the mobile misspelled. I've not changed that yet. And uh, But uh, uh, we did get the recording fixed today about 3 o'clock because get response. Their uh, support system sucks. What can you expect from this training? I have taken you basically from A to Z, almost to the Z now, with this training, from understanding why the digital business card is setting up your workday, building the app, and selling the app. Tonight we're going to talk about sales reps and what kind of day you can expect with that. You will see the simplicity of how I run my business, how I have built a sales team, and how I am expanding my business. A true insight at look at where I am going and where I have been. Keep your questions to the topic. Wednesday night training for general platform training. This training is specific and to the point. And the last 15 minutes of each session, we will go through a question and answer period. <laughs> Say, preach out, oh, Kitty. Hey, Kitty, how many nights have I called you cussing and grazing Cade, having a fit? Can't even find nothing to drink in the house. That's how bad it is. The biggest question I get is this. How to build a sales force? And you know, it's funny. When I talk to new, to, when I talk to new reps, and everybody knows I have a sales team, and I'm very blessed. I mean, I've, I've gone through a ton of a, a ton of people to get where I'm at today, and uh, it's not easy. But the, that's the first thing people ask me: is how do I build a sales force? Because it is so easy to sit down with a notepad and start taking notes and saying, "Gosh, man, Kerry says that the average sales is 1.5 per day, and I can go out and get 10 reps and make and have 15 sales a day." And if I split that at 50%, uh, 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 and so I'm getting 125 bucks a day if I'm selling them for 250 or or 175 if I'm selling them for 350 And so, I, so let's say I'm selling them 250 I get 50%, and that's 15 a day. That's 1,500, and, 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 and another 5 times 125 is 5. Six hundred and fifty dollars. So I'm gonna make about twenty-two hundred dollars, and man, twenty-two hundred dollars a day, and I do that 
five days a week. I'm going to make about oh somewhere around eleven thousand dollars a week. So I want to make twenty. I'm going to make forty-four thousand dollars a month. And man, let me put the ad in the paper, and I'm going to make forty-four thousand dollars a month. That's a half a million dollars a year. Heck, fire, Carrie. I only have to work one year, and I can take a couple of years off. And you know what? I used to believe that. <laughs> I used to believe, Kenny Dutton, did I not used to believe that? Kenny Dutton and I have talked hours into the wee hours of the morning, two, three, four o'clock in the morning sometimes. I'll be honest with you, a couple of, night, couple of times, uh, I might even have had a bottle of wine sitting in front of me. I was so frustrated. And I've only drank three times in my year, in, in my life. And, uh, and, and uh, I'm telling you, it, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. And when you experience it, it's the most uh, eye-opening, humbling experience of your life. And you know, it's really sad. When we were all growing up, and most of you are probably my, I'm 50, I don't, I'm not even sure how old I am. What year is this? Is this what? 2016. I'm 50, I'm 56 years old. And uh, I remember back in the day, man, where people were begging to sell. I mean, people were, they were begging to sell. And, uh, you know, they, uh, shoot, my first sales job, I said in that Shackley meeting, the place was packed. And, uh, man, everybody was, they were ready to go. Matter of fact, I, I told you all the story of me going out and selling the pen and, 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 and selling it for a dollar because I thought I'd be the only person to come back that, that didn't sell. And I was so excited. And, and I sold my I sold my pen, and I came back, and and I was standing there, and man, me and other people who are to this sold. Everybody else actually went to lunch. Like what the heck, man? The guy sold sell the pen at lunch. He didn't say go eat. You know, I was always one of those that I followed the leader, and and, and I wanted to follow success, and I figured this fellow was successful, so I better go the stinking pen. You know, and and it's funny, and I see this even today, and y'all guys have heard me say this. I mean, I, I talk to almost every reseller, uh, every every independent reseller, for instance, an app wizard. You, I talk to all the business owners that are out building mobile app businesses. And uh, you've all heard me say, if you want to do exactly what I do, I'm more than happy to teach you that. Uh, I've sold a lot of apps. My team has sold a lot of apps. Uh, I've been very, very successful doing this. And... Then those that I, I watch, they, they'll sit back and they constantly try to reinvent the wheel. And, and when you're building a sales force, and let me start off with this, you can't reinvent the wheel every day. You better know what the heck you want them to do. And you better know how to do it. It's not easy going and selling anything. I don't care what it is. When I was just a little boy and I had to go sell that pen, it wasn't easy. I had to ask a bunch of people to give me a dollar. And it's not easy going out selling apps every day. That's why I talked about your numbers last week or a couple of weeks ago. Do you know what your numbers are? Do you know what you're doing? Do you know exactly how many people you have to talk to? Let me tell you something. Those numbers are extremely important when you go build a sales force. And the reason they're important is because you've got to know what their numbers are. And they've got to be responsible to you. And you've got to talk to them. And you've got to do things with them. And, and uh, uh, you've got to be a part of their life. And they have to be a part of your life. And you, you, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna control them, but they're gonna come to you and they're gonna wanna know what to do and how to do it and when to do it. And they're going to say, okay, I, I talk to 15 people every day, and, and I've only sold three apps this week. And, and you've got to know that, okay, if you talk to 15 people, and, and uh, uh, if you talk to 15 people every day, so you've talked to 15, 30, 60, you've talked to 75 people, and you sold three apps. If you want to sell an app every day uh, for six days a week, you've got to go out and talk to 150 businesses. And they look at you like you've got 16 eyes and 47 noses on your face. And they're like, what the heck are you talking about? How can I go to 
uh, 150 businesses. And then you have to sit down with them and, and you have to go, you know what? You, you have to go through their sales script with them and you sit down and you, and, and you find out that, that they're totally blowing it on the sales script. But they're totally blowing it and they're still out selling three apps a week. You know, I want to tell you a funny story. I had a sales rep that probably she was averaging one a week and, and was about to get to two a week. And I told her to pack her bags and leave. It wasn't worth three or four hundred dollars a week for me. At all. I mean, I was literally pulling my hair out. I couldn't I couldn't handle it. And uh, I don't you don't want those people ruining your business. You don't want them out saying things. And then you find out that they they say things that aren't true. And there's a whole lot involved in building a sales force. A lot involved. But the first person that has to be able to sell is who? Well, who's the first person out of the box that has to be able to sell? This is question and answer time. That's right, you. You. You, you, and I'm not saying you got to be a superstar salesman. I'm not a superstar salesman. Okay. But I know what works. So you've got to be able to go out and you've got to be able to take the things you do and you've got to be able to put it in a package and know that it works. And you're going to find people that are better than you. And when you do, be thankful. And you're going to find people that aren't as good as you. And when you do, be thankful if they're willing to get out and work. Because you can work with both of people. You can learn from the person that sells a lot. And you can take that, what you learn from them. You can increase your sales. And you can make yourself better. And then in turn, you can go in and you can prop up the guy that's not doing a lot. Or the gal. And you can help them out. So in everything you do, it's a process. And in that process, you have to go through every single day, and you have to make sure that you understand what's going on. I can tell you now. Listen, what I'm going to listen, what I'm going to say. This is very important. If you're struggling on your own, perfect yourself before you hire somebody to try to perfect them. I'm going to start something here real soon, and we will probably take place on Tuesday nights, where I actually do a consulting session. People, and, and I only want to do four or five people at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a sign up for, and, and when that sign up is full, that's the people I'm going to consult on a Tuesday night. I'm going to get free consultation, business consultation, not not how to build anything. I want to talk to you about your business. I want to talk to you about what you're doing because I want to help get you fixed, okay? I want to help get you fixed so that you can build a sales force before you dump in the waters and it's all murky and you want to just jump off the roof the next day. So with all that said, let's talk about how to build a sales force. Crap, man. This dude is going off his rocker. <laughs> so I will put a thing, I will put a sign up in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, yeah, like, in the group and send out an email. But yeah, everybody will be able to come. Hey, this is weird. Why is this the number one question? I think mo most people think it's easy way out and it keeps them off the streets. I, I think building a sales force is, is most people's way of saying, you know what? If I can build a sales force, I can't find my mouse. There it is. If I can build a sales force, I don't have to do anything. And, and I'm not saying that's you, but I have talked to people who have said that. You know, I can't sell, but I'm going to build my business. I got news for you. If you can't, neither can they. If you can't do something, how are you going to teach somebody else to do something? 
I'm building a mini house, or what do they call those, a uh, little house, or whatever they call them. That you see them on the DIY channel. I'm building one of those right now, and I'm doing every single bit of it myself. Every time I run into a problem, where do you think I go to get help? There's actually two places, like a teeny house. There's two places I go to get help. Where would those two places, if, if you were building something, where are two places you think you could go to get help? One, I go to YouTube. And I watch the YouTube videos. I taught myself how to be a plumber. I've taught myself how to frame. I've taught myself how to be an electrician. I've taught myself everything I need to do in order to build this teeny house. Okay? Now, when I can't find it on YouTube or I don't understand it on YouTube, what kind of person would I go to next? I would go to a pro, okay? And sit down and talk to them and find out what I'm doing wrong or explain to me what I'm doing right. So the first place I go, I get in my car and I go to Home Depot. And if, I, if I'm having a plumbing problem, I go to plumbing. If I'm having an electrical problem, I go to electrical. If I'm having any kind of problem, I go find the person in Home Depot who's the expert and say, hey, you show me how to use this manifold with this PEC line in order to set up my hot water heater. And you know what? They show you exactly how to do it. And I sit there and I take pictures of them doing it. And I come back and I do it. You've got to do the same thing with your mobile app business. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to start with the training videos. And then you've got to go out and you've got to get on hands experience. You've got to be able to go out and do it. That's very, very, very important. Very important. Very, very, very important. But it's not going to keep you off the streets. You need to be on the streets. When your salesmen hit the streets, you need to be on the streets with them. You need to go out with them. You need to talk to people. You need to share with people. The number one thing I can tell you about building a sales force is it is very, very hard work. It restricts your time, and the hours are longer than you can ever imagine. Ever imagine. You know, when your salespeople are coming in late at night, sending you sales, and you push to them to deliver them the next day, and they don't get in 9 o'clock, and they send you those, those apps, guess what you're going to be doing at 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning? Kenny Dutton knows better than anybody, and so does Woodrow. Kenny, how many times have I been up at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning building apps? I do it all the time. I was up at 3.45 this morning building apps. It's nothing for me to get up in the middle of the night and build apps. When I hear my um, email go off, when I hear my email go off, I check it. I don't care what time it is because if it's an app I know it's got to be out because you're responsible to make sure that that happens why because you want to get paid so there are no set hours you know it's it's nice to say well I'll tell you what I'll build all of these and uh, you deliver them on this day and this day and this doesn't happen that way I used to think it would but when your app starts stacking up and your sales start slowing down because deliveries aren't met and referrals aren't there. You start pushing a little harder because referrals is the biggest part of your business. Salespeople, they lie. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but they'll lie to you. Most do not want to work. And your stress level will go through the roof. And I mean through the roof. 
you're expecting three sales today, and by the end of the day, you get none. You expect uh, uh, five sales today, and you get one. And, and you're sitting there basing all your budget off of what your sales reps have told you. But they don't want to come in and tell you that they've done nothing. And so you're basing everything off of what they say. And at the end of the week, instead of doing 25 apps, you do three. So instead of making your, you know, uh, $3,000 that you was expecting, you made 150. And so there, there's a lot of stress with that. You see, when other people are doing things for you, you have no control when they're not with you. Does everybody realize that? When other people are doing things for you, you've lost total control of what's going on. How many, how many of you think you're going to be in control of your salespeople every day? How many of you would like to be in control of your salespeople every day? But how many of you think you're going to be in control of your salespeople every day? How many of you think you're going to be in control? I saw a yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah, it's not going to happen. As soon as they get off that phone, they're going to do whatever the heck they want to do. My little Tilly is sound asleep in my arms. Yeah, they're going to make you think you're in control. That's right. They're going to make you think you're in control. They're going to make you think that, 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 that you've got it all under control. And I don't want to scare you. I want you to build a sales force. But you need to understand the pitfalls. How many of you have heard me say in the past, I'm going to share with you every time I've hit a brick wall, every time I've come up against that proverbial wall that's knocked me down, See, I could sit here and I could make this a hoopla, rah rah, and make you feel like you're gonna go out and 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 and, and, and yeah, like I control cat. Yeah, yeah, they, I ain't never seen a cat that you control. Now my little dog, she sound asleep in my arms. She ate some chicken before she got up here. She's happy as a lark, you know. I tell her to go lay down on her bed. She get down and go lay down on her bed. Cat's a different different animal. Your your salespeople are cats. You're the little dog. Okay. You're the little dog. So I want to tell you the walls that I think. I want you to build a sales force. It's not hard. It is time consuming. And it is tedious. And it will make you want to throw yourself off the roof. Not to include the work it takes just to find one or two. How many of you would like to go out and have 10 salespeople tomorrow? How many of you would like to go out and hire 10 sales tomorrow? <laughs> no thanks. No way, no way. I'd like to hire two or three. Hey, at least you guys are at least you guys are, are realistic. And and that's what I want you to think about this. You hire your one and you get them good. You hire another one and you get them good. Two sales, good sales reps can, can make you a lot of money. Two good sales reps can make you a lot of money. You think about this for a moment. Two good reps, they go out and they start hitting 1.5 a day. Okay? So you're getting three apps a day on the average. All right, you're getting three apps a day on the average. Now, those three apps a day are going to give you uh, three, six, nine referrals. And you go out and sell about 70% of those referrals. Now you're up to four to five, six a day. I can now, at 350 bucks, that's $175 per app. At five a day, Kenny Dutton, who's the man? Who's the man with calculator? What's five times 175 bucks a day? What's five times 175 bucks a day? Anybody? 
<coughs> five times what's eight hundred fifty bucks a day. How many of you could make a eight live on eight hundred fifty dollars a day? How many of you could live on eight hundred and fifty dollars a day? Eight hundred and seventy. You know why you guys don't make no money? Every time I ask a math question, it's always different. So how many of you would like to make eight hundred fifty to eight hundred and seventy five dollars a day? You would like to make eight hundred and seventy five dollars a day? Shit. I make eight hundred and seventy five dollars every day. I would no, no. I would I want to make ten thousand dollars a day. I just told somebody today, this is my million. I'm making a million dollars. Sure you would. You want to make that much money? There's nothing wrong with not making that much money. I want you to make ten thousand dollars a day. But with two reps, if you get you two good ones, and, and, and you've got to you got to search and you got to find and you got to do all that stuff. You know. You got to do all those kind of things. It doesn't. <laughs> you must be driving a Bugatti. <laughs> yeah, on the Bugatti. You know, go out and find your one or two. Get off the I need ten. I want everybody to clear that out of their mind. Believe it or not, you know a good salesperson that could go to work for you tomorrow. Every one of you, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. If this is what you're looking for, then buckle up. And I will tell you what I have done to hire salespeople. I mean, I've, I've hired like 30 salespeople this year. <laughs> you know, it's still only got, got three working for me. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, you know. But, uh, you know, you just have to, you have to push. You have to work hard. You, you, got, to, you got to stay on top of it. And uh, they're always excited until you say you got to go out cold call. You know what they want? They they're kind of like us. They we they want to set it to home and and get on the phone and and try to make it happen or whatever. You know, I see Janine uh, type in there. Well, let her ask her question. I know she got a great question. Number one. You got to talk to people you know that are looking for work. Thank you, Janine. Look at there, Janine. Janine put the whole thing. You're my new calculator person, Janine. Thank you. I, I mean, you'd like to make seventeen five a month. That's pretty good money. One hundred seventy five thousand, almost quarter half a million, uh, quarter million dollars a year. Not bad. You need to talk to people you know. That are looking for work. Well, you and Tom had two different numbers, so I was confused. Talk to people you know that are looking for work. Plus, Janine makes a lot better chocolate chip cookie than you do. Talk to people you know that. How many of you have asked around your neighborhood or asked your friends, asked your friends if they know anybody that's looking for a job? Has have any of you even done that? Trust me, people know what you're doing. Go find you some 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 young guy, some young girl in their 20s, 25-ish, that's got a lot of mileage left, that can get out there and hit the streets, that's got a great presentation, and have them go out with you a couple of times. They're not doing nothing but sitting on their butt at the house anyway. Have them go out with you a couple of times and watch you sell it. Now, let me tell you how you do that. Now, I'm not telling you to mislead anybody, but what's the greatest presentation you can make? What's the greatest sales presentation you can make? Nobody else is watching you. Yeah, church, man. What a great place to go. Unless they're Baptists, and they'll sure enough lie to you. I'm just kidding. I'm Baptist. That's the reason I said that. <laughs> you know? I mean, you think about it. What is the best what's the presentation you can take somebody else to show that's right a sale one that you know is going to close so what you want to do is you know you've got two deals tomorrow okay and you know they're good deals and you already know they're sold you've already talked to them take them out with you and show them how to close that deal and collect that check let me tell you, there's nothing that excites a salesman more than anything, or a new young salesman more than anything, than seeing somebody close a deal. 
Now, we all know it's not that easy, but if you go out there and show them that it's failure after failure after failure after failure, and then you finally get a deal, guess what? They don't want to go through those failures. That's natural habit, right? What was Zig talking about in the night's training? Zig was talking about attitude. You know, if your attitude is to go out and fail all day long, what's going to happen? You're going to fail. But if your attitude is you're going to win all day long, then you don't care about the failures because you know you're going to win. Something's going to happen good, and you're going to go home with those deals. So find people that you know. That's the first place you need to look. My number one salesman is someone that I knew. He brought on the other two salesmen that have done very successful with me. That's the way it works. You see? Referral base in sales, sales, sales people, and that's just the way it works. So look for people you know. That's the first place you need to start. Hire locally first. You understand that market, and it's easier to keep accountability. I don't have a local salesman one. <laughs> <laughs> so I went totally against the grain, but the person I knew I knew was going to be successful happened to live, uh, you know, a thousand miles from me. So that was just that was just the luck. Hire someone locally. That way you can keep up with them. You know what they're doing. You know how they're doing it, and the whole nine yards. Does that make sense? <laughs> nope, I didn't hire a Texan. Texan lied to you quicker than anything. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I've actually hired a couple of Texans. I've actually hired a couple of Texans, and they didn't work out very well. Yeah, Texans have a job. That's true. Okay? So keep it local. Start off with one. I'm going to talk about 1099 in just a minute. I hired no one for 1099. No one. Start off with no one, no more than two reps. Please, if you don't understand anything, remember number four. That is so important. So important. So important. How many reps are you going to start off with? Two. Very good. Very good. Make sure they are dependent reps. Do not hire any employees. So everybody understand what I just said? Do not hire employees. Do not hire employees. These are independent sales reps. They're actually contracted with you to sell your product. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. Never offer anyone a salary or a draw. Never offer anyone a salary or a draw. A draw is when someone comes up and says, hey, I've got five deals working this week. I'm going to make, a, a, you know, $1,000. Could I get a draw of $500 against my pay I'm getting? Never, ever, ever give a draw. You will never, ever, ever see that person again. 
Ask any company that does that and ask them how much money they've lost. And you know what? They're dumb enough to continue to go back and do it over and over and over again. Okay? <laughs> You're so crazy. Let's talk about pay. Somebody asked about the 1099. You do not pay a commission. Yeah, like, <laughs> that is so true. It's like lending money to your family. I, I, lent, I lent a bunch to my brother one time, and I still ain't seen it. But I started to go get one of the other people that call you every day. You're not paying commission. Does everybody understand that? You are not paying these people a commission. They are paying you. They are paying you. They're buying, buying wholesale and selling retail. And they're selling suggested retail. I've got mixed feelings on that. I had a rep who said, I can get more for this app here than y'all are getting there. Can I sell it for that? And I said, yes. Go ahead. Well, I was getting the same commission because mine is based on what? Suggested retail. My suggested retail. And they were making more money. And I didn't have a problem with that. Now, if I've got two reps in the same area, I don't want them out there undercutting each other and cutting each other's nose off. If you find that happening, you're going to have to get rid of one of them. Whoever's, whoever's out scamming the system, you got to get rid of them. Yeah, and if you're in the same area, you're definitely going to get that to happen. I can promise you that. I can promise you that. Keep your prices consistent. Now, if they're two states away and they're selling in a totally different city, it's a different situation, and you've only got one rep, but you can't, you can't vary pricing with two reps in the same area. Do not do that. Yes, they are selling under their company name. Uh, the last rep I hired that I got rid of was Starlight or Star. So I can't. Even, I mean, she, she 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 drove me so crazy, man. I, I I don't even remember what her company name was. And she even sent me money. <laughs> you know, that's bad when somebody sending you money and you can't have it. But it was Star something, Starlight, Star Bright, Last Star, Star Point. Star point. Let me tell you something. There, there was a lot of points. Okay. They are buying wholesale, selling retail. They're purchasing the apps from you. If they don't have a company, they've got to go out and get a, uh, 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 golly boy, they've got to have one. Now, they can, they can run it underneath their social security number. Okay. No, they're not white label. Yeah, DBA, thank you. Doing business as. Thank you. Now, they don't have to have an EIN. They can use their social security number to go get a DBA. You can run a DBA doing business as on social security number. They don't have to have an EIN. Now, if they want to go through all the trouble and do all that stuff, they can. Okay? They can. Does everybody understand the... Uh, Cool, cool time. I want to talk about Craigslist in just a moment. Does everybody understand the wholesale thingy here? That's where you eliminate. You're paying them. They're actually buying from. You. And I do an invoice just like you would get a get a receipt from a store. Cost is fifty percent of product. 
The cost is 50% of the product, i.e. a DBC sells for 250 retail, cost for the rep is 125. Now you better make gosh dang sure that you have it spelt out. If you have it spelt out, if they send you something else, there's a charge for that. Because remember, they're paying you. You're going to invoice them. Do I understand that? Make sure you're very specific on your charges. Very specific. No, I actually build the apps as soon as they order them. Yes, they are responsible for their own taxes. And they're getting a they're getting an invoice from you so they have a receipt for the, your sale. Absolutely. This is how I build apps. I get an order via email. I build the app at the same time I build the app, I send them an invoice. I require invoices to be paid within 48 hours. They have to put the checks in the bank. It takes two days for the checks to clear. Somebody goes out and sells 10 apps. I'm not going to wait to get those apps on the street. That's just me. My pet peeve, someone's selling something and that customer not having it within 48 hours in their hand. That's why we have some great referrals, and that's why our sales have been so phenomenal this year, is we deliver quality at a rapid pace so that it's in their hand and we can get those referrals while they are hot. If you wait, you've got a grumpy customer, he's got to wait two weeks on his deal, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, and, I, and I'm going to show you guys the pay system I use next week. And I am working with uh, with FreshBooks to get you guys a deal. Okay? I'm just waiting to hear back from them. They're putting a deal together for us. All right? Any questions so far? I want to ask these as we go. Any questions? Questions, questions, questions. Yeah, fifty percent. That's correct. I talk to my people every single day yeah, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute minute just a minute no I will not give it let me tell you why I won't give you a sample of my contract my contract is specific to here written for here you need to go to your attorney and make sure yours is written for there or go on my contract in your state city or whatever I will not get my contract and I do that for a specific reason I'm, I'm going to give you a legal document, and you use it, and then someone sue you, and then you come back and say, well, Kerry gave that to me. That's what he's using. Sorry. Hell, I don't pause the app. I turn it off. I delete it. I'm not going to give you points in it. Go ask an attorney. I'm not an attorney. My price is fifty. If I go out selling an app, I'm three forty nine. If someone, if my sales rep sells it, I get one seventy five. Absolutely. I, I I I I talk to my sales rep two or three times a day. They usually call me because they're excited they got to sell. But every evening I talk. Hey, what'd you do today? How many calls did you make? Uh, how many deals you got working? What do you got for tomorrow? Send me everything right now. 
I mean, you've got to stay in constant contact with these people. They, even though they're independent, you have guidelines, and I'm just going to talk about that. They are responsible for their taxes. You are a wholesaler. I've had some want a 1099. If that's the case, I don't bring them on. I'm not going to deal with the expense. There's not enough money in it. There's not enough money in it to hire an accountant to do all that stuff. Even as an independent rep, they follow your company guidelines. If you say it's done this way, that's the way they do it. I put on roofing shingles. I, I use GAF shingles, okay? GAF has certain, if you want to put on GAF shingles, you have to do it a certain way by their guidelines. And if not, they do not warrant those shingles. And they send people out to check you to make sure you're doing it correctly. I'm not an employee of GAF. I don't work for GAF. All I'm doing is reselling their product. I'm buying their shingles, okay, marking them up and selling them. So I am responsible to follow their guidelines. Your sales reps are responsible, and you need to spell it out in your contract, okay? I don't care what you do, Tom. You can do anything you want. I'm not here to tell you any scenario on pricing. You set your own prices, you make your own money. You know? I wouldn't, I don't do it that way. I 50%. You've already complicated the whole process trying to trying to trying to squeeze another hundred dollars out of it and cheat your salesperson out there. So you know it's tough as a boot to go out there and make those sales. Yeah, simple. Keep it simple. Is there anything wrong with that scenario? Everything's wrong with that scenario because it's not simple. But you set forth the guidelines. You tell them what is required, what is not required. You tell them how they will sell it that they will go in and demonstrate it exactly how you do it, the whole nine yards, okay? Everything, you lay it out in black and white, and you give them those instructions. And if, if they're not making sales and you didn't lay it out, it's nobody's fault but your own. Where do you want to advertise that? I get this a lot, okay? I, I get it a ton. Where do I advertise that? Lump a newspaper. Put an ad, I mean, three lines for 10 or whatever it is, Sunday paper or your 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 your, your low paper. Okay. No, you're not acting like a boss. You're acting, you're following the guidelines that you They're representing your Does that make sense? It has nothing to do about inquiring about what they've done as far as bringing you business. All you're doing is inquiring about their sales. You you know, I you can't call somebody. Trust me, I'll them all the time. I I want to say, did you get off your butt and go out and sell today? But you can't. You know, I, I basically pick up the phone and say this. Hey, man. What's going on? How many sales did you have today? None. How many people did you go out and talk to? None. So you didn't go out today? Okay, dude. You going out tomorrow? All right, let me know. Thanks. You hang up the phone and you, you say what a jackass he is because he didn't go out and work. You can't tell him that. Okay? But that, that's the scenario. Yeah, you got to know what they're doing. You got to know what they're doing. Absolutely. And trust me, 
They want you to know what they're doing because they want their apps built. These guys aren't going to jack you around. They're professionals. The ones that jack you around, they're not going to work anyway. You're going to get rid of them immediately. Immediately. Yeah, must inspect what you, that's the old, old military saying. Inspect what you expect. Okay. Craigslist. I, I, I'm on a different computer and I forgot to bring the stuff over from the other computer because I was tied on time. Uh, do you encourage your sales rep to a certain number? Yeah, absolutely. That's why you got to know what your numbers are. Absolutely. I tell my guys, hey, listen, if you go out and talk to 10 people, you should sell, you should sell a deal a day. I've got a list you can advertise in and Craigslist. I'll show that next week. I'm going to show you how to do that to do it for free. The specific formula you got to follow, and then trust me, it took me a whole week to figure it out. And I'm going to show you. I'll show you next week how to do that. And word of mouth. Somebody mentioned a while ago. I think it was Janine about uh, buying church. I get a call from my guys every day. They usually call me so much it gets on my nerves, believe it or not. I mean, my guys call me all the time. As many of you know, I'm extremely anal. And they probably don't want me calling them, so they call me. So, you know, it's uh, uh, they, they, know who, they know who you are. Let me, let me put it to you this way. If they respect you and you respect them, you're never going to have a problem getting the information. Never. What do they want to do? They want to make money, and you're the expert. You're the expert, so they're going to come to you, and they're going to want to know what they're doing wrong and how to make more money. That's what a salesperson wants to know, a real salesperson. You're going to get a bunch of people out there that, that, that ain't worth spit, you know? Is that on the list that was posted in, uh, in in the Facebook group, George? So you're going to advertise in local papers. It's going to cost you ten or fifteen bucks. As, as I've always said, there is money in running a bit. I mean, it costs money to run a business. Sometimes a lot of money. Okay. Uh, I know a company that. Uh, uh, spent, gosh, man, $100,000 last year in Craigslist alone. I've paid, I, they, they've always charged for ads, but there's a list of cities that we have, unless they've changed, uh, that, um, that you can advertise for free. A bunch of cities. A whole bunch of cities. And I'll give, I'll give you all that list next week, and I'll show you how to go ahead and do that. And word of mouth. Ad for Craigslist. I've got the ad too, but I didn't I didn't move on this computer. Any questions at all? We're actually gonna finish kind of on time tonight. Do not forget. Do not forget tomorrow night's training. We're gonna have an SEO specialist on. We're going to have an SEO specialist on tomorrow night, and you will not want to miss it. Mike Cahill will be on also. Mike Cahill actually sells their product and is doing very well. Matter of fact, I think Mike is their number one, their number one rep for SEO. And he's going to share tomorrow night how he's added that to his toolbox. So don't miss tomorrow night's training. It's going to be a lot of fun. These guys are really great people. No, I have not had a chance to complete that training yet. I've got about halfway through it. I've spent all week building this directory for tomorrow for 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 this uh, coupon app thing. Oh yeah, the border. Hang on, just one second. <clears throat> Let 
Give me one second here. I'm going to show you that right now, DJ, if I can have a moment. Y'all are asking questions. I can't see the screen right now, so. Let me dog down. She's laid in my lap and slept the whole hour. Hey, thank you guys so much to hear. One minute. Move this over here. Everybody see that real quick? Okay, go ahead and go to edit content. I don't even have a clue what this app is. Other than junk, probably. That's nothing. Go in here to settings. Go in here to styles and colors. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everybody. A little slow. Hey, thank you, Luke. Hey, email me your stuff, Luke. Don't forget. <laughs> I, I don't forget those, those things. Okay, Deb, you still with me? Is Deb still with me? Okay, go into content body. Right here under content body, this is what puts the box around anything that of content. Like the like the thing that you put in there. This is probably not at zero. See the see the gray box go around that. That's probably set at about five. You can take it all the way down to zero, and or and that's the easiest thing to do, and or whatever your background color is, just change it right here. And then it's neutral. So it doesn't matter what size that is, other than the fact that it will change the size of the box. The best thing to do is go to border size and make it zero. You get that, Deb? And it's under content body under styles and colors. You get that, Deb? I'll give you guys a preview of what's to come with coupon apps. Yes, ma'am, and just zero the border. Always use Google Analytics.
see here, I've gone in and I've got the, I've actually got the enterprise system. I purchased couponapps.com. That's APZ because APS and APP is gone. And I'm naming all my companies APZ. Okay. And we'll go in here and you can look at uh, the new app. I'll go ahead and show everybody. I'm very excited about this. Matter of fact, this is the most exciting thing I've done since the uh, digital business card. And I'll show you, I'll give you a quick glance at the, Direct for my coupon apps. Really, really cool. I'm very, very, very excited. And uh, by tomorrow night, if we have time, we're going to get into the direct. We're going to get into the directory just a little bit anyway. But this is new. This is the uh, new outline for the directory. I'll be showing the new uh, uh, the apps, the coupon apps. Okay, It'll be a little bit different design than the actual mobile business card, and I'll, I'll show you that. But uh, this is this is the new coupon app directory, and you can see up here, I've got a call to action. Remember, we talked about call to action. Click the button above. And that goes into the actual uh, directory. And the directory is going to be a slide out. And under here will be the niches. Okay. You'll notice I didn't fill up the front page with the niches. And we're going to talk about all this. And like restaurants and bars or whatever. We'll have the list here. Okay. And this is the new directory. You can see here, I've got a little logo down here. Below this, I'm going to show you how to do that if you want to do it. Down here, if, if, if a customer wants more info, they can also reach the coupons down here. Okay. They can contact me, coupon apps here, here, and they can share on Facebook. And, of course, we want them to join our list for the local, local, uh, local directory. But that's the new coupon app, and we'll get into that tomorrow night. Everybody ready to start selling coupons? I've been doing the numbers on it. I'm extremely excited. Uh, I can tell you now, looking at that picture right there, that's a million dollars. You want to go out and make a million? How many of you want to make a million dollars? I know I've asked that a many a time. How many of you want to make a million dollars this year? Follow my lead and we will make a million dollars. There's always somebody that's greedy. <laughs> so, but we're gonna start. We're gonna start. Uh, start on this, and we're gonna get heavy into this. After next week's training, I'll say it again. After next week's training, and I'm gonna limit it to three to five people, so that it's very, very, very uh, personal. We can all sit down and talk, and I can consult with you. Um, I will tell you now, it, it, I've got people that pay me. I charge $250 an hour for consulting, and I'm going to set up consulting in a group manner for three to five of you at a time, and I'm going to spend time with you to help you build your business. So, I'm willing to give up $30,000 worth of consulting to, to help you guys get going. Any questions about tonight? Woo! Girl, you can send me all kind of cookies if you make a million dollars. I'll help you make two. I'll, I will help you make two. That way I can get all kind of cookies. What I'm talking about. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Love you so much. This has been awesome. Does everybody pretty much understand the digital business cards, where we've come, where we're going, and what we've done?
No, you're not going to give them access to the control panel. Now, you, you, you can give them access to the marketing platform. But I recommend upselling that. We're going to talk about that when we get to that point. <laughs> I have the CD house. I'll show y'all pictures. Yeah, but you don't have access to the marketing platform. I recommend you upselling it for you know another thirty to forty fifty bucks a month and uh, take care of Jerry and make some money with it. Any questions on digital business cards and hiring sales reps? Any at all? Got it, got it, got it? <laughs> well, you're a little bit tonight, man. I'm starting to feel bad. You got a complex going on. 